the Raven Written by Edgar Allan Poe Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, I distinctly remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. I eagerly wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow, from my books a creased of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to the still beating of my heart, I stood repeating, to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. That it is and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore? This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore, merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, Soon again I heard a tapping, louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what threat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven, of the saintly days of yore, not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bus of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, bugling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven. Tell me why thy lordy name is on the night's Plutean shore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word did he outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown here before. On the morrow, he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness, broken by the reply, so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters, it is only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster until his songs one burden bore.
till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, nevermore. But the raven still bugling my sad fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking, what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungangly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking, nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, with the lamplight floating o'er. She shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, through the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels hath sent thee, respite, respite, and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff, this kind of nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore from thy memories of Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there? Is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God, within distant Eden, shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend. I shrieked, upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutoian shore. Leave no black pume as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak out of my heart and take thy form from off my door, quoth the raven. Nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamp light o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted evermore. <laughs>